Greetings. <clears throat> My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. And today, in this video, I'd like to discuss how we got algebra. And you will read a lot of things on the internet, on Wikipedia, on Stanford's, you know, math sites, etc., and on basically any university website on what on how we got algebra but most of the information you'll read there is uh, usually inaccurate and uh, most of the times it's just plain rubbish it's not at all true so i'm going to show you now or tell you about how we really got algebra so let's begin <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so was al khwarizmi the father of algebra because one of the uh, uh, misstatements or claims is that al khwarizmi was the father of algebra and, and it's not true it's actually blatantly false um, but we'll get to that in a moment where did variable and symbol come from okay where did uh, x's and y's and pi and e and square root 2 etc come from how was the concept of equation realized and <clears throat> and where did did the operations of arithmetic come from so i'll attempt to answer all these questions now now <clears throat> descartes <clears throat> uh, who was in my opinion the last great french mathematician was the first to introduce symbols yeah, i think he he was the first to use the symbol he or x in place of actual magnitudes or quantities. It's my opinion that he started the Enlightenment because he went back to the perfect knowledge of the ancient Greeks. al Khwarizmi is best known for completion of the square. That's really his claim to fame. And... While al Khwarizmi was probably good at mathematics and arithmetic, arithmetic, it's hardly appropriate to call him the father of algebra because all the conceptual objects, including the solution to quadratic equations, had already been done by the ancient Greeks. In fact, the ancient Greeks could even solve quartic equations geometrically. Okay? Now, um, Algebra is really, and it's, it's a weakened form of geometry. It's an attempt to <clears throat> describe geometric measure or geometric objects using the abstract unit, okay? And it's predicated entirely on geometry. Now, algebra cannot describe all measures. In other words, Algebra does not have a name for all the possible magnitudes, as is the case in geometry, okay? And I'll show you in a little while that you can. If you start off with a unit in geometry, you can define any magnitude, exactly. So, for example, once we choose a unit, then we can actually, uh, then we can find exactly the result of any arithmetical operation. So, we can find, for example, the result of this magnitude pi times the magnitude square root 2 or the quotient or the sum or difference. But all of these <clears throat> have no result in algebra whatsoever because algebra has no numbers for these magnitudes. Okay, these are not numbers. These are symbols for magnitudes or sizes. Magnitude is just another word for size. <clears throat> Nothing else. Or quantity. Now, if you're not convinced, then you can draw any circle as shown below, and I'm going to show you shortly how this works. Now, you could write that pi times square root 2 is approximately equal to this, uh, or its quotient is approximately equal to this, but these approximations are always rational numbers. So there is no result in algebra because we know that there are no numbers to describe either of the measures pi or square root 2. So uh, these approximations are rational numbers and in actual fact only half measures 
Okay, so I mean, a half measure is not a measure. You can't have a partial measure or a half measure or an approximation and call it a measure. A measure means the complete measure, okay? And that's why a number is the name that's given to a measure that describes a magnitude or size. So when we write these symbols, we're stating that they represent the respective sizes, but there are no numbers describing the measure of these sizes, all right? So in both these uh, equations here, pi is treated like a variable and so is square root two, right? They're treated exactly like variables, no difference. And if we replace both of uh, the pi and the square root two with x, the result is the same. And you'll notice here that x is a variable even with a radical, because if you do an operation on uh, any, any uh, symbol with a radical, it doesn't touch the symbol at all. It, it works only on the exponent, okay? So it operates on the exponent, which happens to be in this case a one, right? And, uh, and one is a number. So again, remember x over here need not be a measure, okay? It, it, in this case, it isn't a measure. Uh, it's, it could be a number, but it's not as we know from the previous page, okay? In this case, yeah, it's not a number, right? In either of these cases. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> many of you have heard uh, your math teacher tell you that pi r squared is more accurate than 3.14 r squared, but 3.14 r squared, but this is drivel. Pi is not a measure of anything. So algebra treats pi exactly as it would treat a variable or an unknown, and pi has no measure. So there is no number that describes the measure of pi. However, 3.14 is a number, okay? Now remember that pi is the name of a magnitude that can only be expressed as a ratio. By the way, a ratio is not a number. It's a relationship or a comparison, as you see here. That's not a number. To be a number, you have to have a magnitude that measures both the consequent and the antecedent, okay? The antecedent and the consequent. There is no magnitude that measures both. Because if they were, you'd be able to write it as a number, like this, circumference length over diameter length, all right? So where did equations come from? You could look at this uh, expression here and say, well, uh, the way we got it is like this. X is to 1 as X squared is to X. It started off as ratios, okay? That's what a ratio is, all right? You can replace any of these is to with a colon, and it becomes a ratio, right? And so is to means is in a, re in a relationship with. But we can go back further, right? Ratio came long before equation. In fact, it came long before number. The first ratios were not described by unknown or variable symbols, but by line segments, as you see here. So, for example, this, the ratio of this red line to this blue line means that the red line has a relationship with the blue line. Okay, and similarly, in this case here, if we have a longer red line to a short, shorter red line, and as you can see, if we write this ratio, it becomes this ratio over here, right? Because since this line and this line have a measure, we could write it as one half. And since this line and this line has a measure, we could write it as three one. So this, this here is a ratio of numbers, okay? And it can be written with a horizontal line or a slanting line uh, once you have numbers. So an equation is realized when two ratios not only have a relationship, but are equal. So for example, these two are equal ratios, and we could write it as 2 over 4 is equal to 1 over 2 in algebra. Note that a symbol is not always a variable. So for example, if we have x plus 2 equals 5, this means that x is known to be 3. x is neither an unknown nor a variable in this equation here, okay? And this is how we got equations. <coughs> Excuse me. So what about the operations in algebra? Well, the answer is that you need to go a little bit further. So 
uh, book five and proposition 12 deals with all the theory of fractions. And in order to find out more about that, because I don't have time to cover it in this video, you can study my article and also watch these videos here, okay, to learn more. So, uh, this proposition encompasses, as I said, all the theory of fractions, and it's all included in my free ebook. So, let's get back to Proposition 12. And Proposition 12 is really just uh, all about similar triangles, okay? It, it is based on similar triangles. You would have no fraction theory, no numbers, nothing without first having similar triangles. So let's see how this works. Now, as I said to you earlier on in geometry, uh, if I want to multiply this blue line length by this dark blue line length, I can get an exact number, right? I'll get six, but you can't always do this in algebra. So for example, if I had like 3.14 something, which let's suppose is pi, and the square root of two, which is 1.4 something like that, then this red line, in geometry would be the exact product but not so in algebra because we don't have numbers that describe the measure of these lengths okay so um, algebra again is a weakened form of geometry it attempts to describe these line segment lengths in terms of the abstract unit and as you see any similar triangle would work okay it doesn't have to be the particular triangle that you're using here and normally when you see similar triangles you don't see them within in a circle but that's how they were realized within a circle everything that you know trigonometry etc algebra comes from a circle which is the third requirement of euclid's five requirements not the bullshit that you hear of axioms and postulates there are no axioms or postulates in mathematics so, uh, this is pretty much it then. I think I've covered everything. And that is the true story of how we got algebra. Not the drivel that you hear from your teachers who are, in most cases, very ignorant. And they basically just re regurgitate the bullshit they've heard over and over again. I mean, for example, uh, another uh, typical claim is that calculus was made rigorous. And... And those of you who have been following me now know that that was a false claim that was simply believed to be true because of the number of times it was repeated in books, in lectures, etc. Because before my new calculus, there was no rigorous formulation of calculus. So that's pretty much it. I encourage you to download my free book to which I'll place a link in the detail section and I'll try to place the links of the other uh, material and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, story of how we got algebra so remember al Khwarizmi was not the father of algebra uh, in fact uh, I would say the ancient Greeks were the fathers of algebra but as I've told you in the past um, well-formed knowledge is not invented it is realized and the Greeks are no different to most other humans. If they hadn't realized these things, it would probably have just been a matter of time before somebody else did. So subscribe to my channel. Remember to click like, by the way, because I have many enemies and they actually have tried on several occasions to take down my channel and on some occasions have succeeded and I've managed to have it reinstated but we don't want to go there again so make sure that you click like uh, spread the news and uh, I'll try to be in touch with you again soon about another interesting topic here on the new calculus channel my name is John Gabriel till next time goodbye